Nicholas, I would like to call this meeting to order. Roxanne, would you call the roll, please? Mrs. Davis? Here. Mr. Dombrowski? Mrs. Ingle? Mr. Malone? Here. Mr. Marshall? Here. Mrs. McGratton? Here. Mr. Sebelia? Here. Mr. Soms? Here. Mr. Washington? Six here, three absent. Okay, uh, at this question. time, whoops, at this time, I will ask if there are any resident and property owners. Now, I know there are two that wish to speak. Um, if they haven't made it yet, I'm happy to go back to them. I did see John Rodolico sign on. Are you here, John? Okay, we'll, we'll move through, um, and then I will go back at some point if I see them uh, looking to speak. It's, oh, wait, actually, I see Betsy Graham. Are you here, Betsy? I am. Can you hear me okay? okay. Yes, feel free to... Um, um, address the council um, three minute limit and we're happy to have you. Oh, thank you. Um, I think John was going to talk first if he's there. I tried to get on through the phone line and couldn't, so I went through the, the uh, okay. portal. And, and John, it looks like John signed on, but we don't hear him. Okay. Um, so let me go ahead and, and start. Um, we live over here on Long Pond, over on the eastern side of Ledger, and um, we have become concerned about the bridge that uh, spans the border between Ledger and Stonington. That would be Whiffer Brook. It leaves Long Pond and travels on down to the Mystic River. And the bridge that's there is actually co-owned by the town of Ledger and the town of Stonington because the brook is the border between the two towns. Um, so back in 2010 with that, the flood that happened in April, March, April, there, the state has been looking at the bridge and saying that it is in a state of disrepair and needs to be replaced or totally closed and removed. Um, and the towns, the two towns, had agreed to, um, with a mem memorandum of understanding in 2016, that they would um, co-fund repairing the bridge. Um, the short answer is that their original plans were, did not meet the state standards. Um, they were originally for only a 25-year, um, a 25-year, 25-year storm, and then they discovered that there was a species of special, special interest. Um, which is called a bridal shiner. It's a minnow, um, and it requires a special base, and so the bridge hat was reconstructed, and the price tag gradually increased, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, and Stonington has, for the last six years, taken the bridge funding out of their budget, um, and then finally they have announced this year that they don't, see for they don't foresee being able to ever repair the bridge and so they went to close it, and that was published in the paper, and so we became aware aware of it because I think they were talking to um, our stone our ledger representatives to um, Steve Maslin and stuff, but they the communication wasn't there with the local people, and published in the pay, in the day newspaper, March 26, first selectman in Cheeseboro, her statement was to the was basically the, the bridge only serves the purpose of bringing tourists to the casino but she didn't recognize that there actually are over 150 homes that are north of that bridge um and most of us are ledger residents so we felt like it was worth asking the town to help step in and request that they not totally defund it and take it not because that would remove the bridge from any consideration with the state if they did that. Um, so that's why we're here. Are okay. there? And I know I've sent letters to various members to um, Mayor Allen, and I sent one to Linda Davis because I felt like it was worth pursuing this. And I've 
also been in touch with the, the senators for both Ledger and for Stonington, um, Kathy Ostin and Heather Summers, and to our representatives, Mike France and Kate Rodello, and um, asked local townspeople to just reach out. Uh, we did receive your, your letter, and it was okay. forwarded to all town councilors. Okay, great. And um, I also sent a copy of the Memorandum of Understanding. Mm -hmm. So I yes. understand from John that um, there may be some confusion from the state's perspective. One town has to be the, the town of registration for the bridge, but that the anything that happens on the bridge is actually co-shared by the towns. And I have some documentation from um, Steve Maslin that talks about that and communication with um, Connecticut DOT. And we did receive a copy of the memo of yeah. uh, understanding. And we also, all of the council was here um, and involved back then except for one. So we, we still have the same um, council that we had in 2016. And with that, I'll thank you very much. Is John here and able to speak? How about that? What? Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead, John. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, there's not much I can add to Betsy, but uh, just uh, just to mention a couple of things. Uh, again, I'd like to impress on the council the value of this bridge. I know Stonington was looking at you know a couple of options, one of which was closing the bridge. And you have to understand that uh, even though the the bridge connects Stonington and Ledyard. There's not the impact to Stonington for that because uh, all of Stonington is south of that bridge, but it's really our access from all the way up to Route 2, anywhere south, uh, to use that bridge. It's not, it is not a main road to the casino. As you know, years ago, when the casino came into being, that was declared to be a scenic road and buses and other type of traffic is prohibited. Uh, Stonington did propose to narrow the bridge to one lane, which would be a, a temporary solution that we would not oppose. Uh, but again, it is an important access for local residents to get south. Uh, second, as witnessed in the storm of 2010, when the Lantern Hill Pond Dam broke and that took out the bridge over Lantern Hill Road uh, up by the, by the uh, boat launch, and that was many months out of commission. And then eventually, because of the flood going down, it took out the bridge on 184. And I'm sure you all remember that. In six months, that bridge was out and eventually uh, probably ended up costing millions. A more recent example of the need to keep that bridge and the viaduct under it, keep that hole, keep that, uh, keep that working, is the recent, uh, if you go up to Whitford Pond, which is in Stonington, you'll see that that pond is just about drained because that dam let loose. And that's what happens at the chain reaction all the way down till you get to Long Island Sound. There's also the bridge down in uh, Mystic Center that uh, there, Stonington is also not going to repair. But it, it's very important. It's important uh, uh, for many reasons, but again, Many of them are environmental and many of them are local residents. And again, of course, there's always the issue of emergency services. As recent as this afternoon, there was a call on Lantern Hill and the emergency vehicles have to use that bridge to get over there. The alternate is up on 214, up through the north, up by the casino. And that's, that's a tough, uh, tough uh, route. So I uh, thank you very much uh, for listening and appreciate, uh, as always, Ledyard, uh, doing what they should be doing, which is funding uh, funding capital projects. And I compliment the town that years ago, uh, probably close to 10 years ago, that money was begun to be set aside. And also compliments to uh, Steve Aslan, who worked very closely with Stonington on this project in completing the design. So I thank you very much for listening. Thanks. Thank you, John. Um, are there any other that wish to speak at this time. Uh, could, I, could I address the council just briefly? Uh, yes. Uh, I, yes. Was wonder, I was wondering if later on in the agenda, if you could address if the uh, uh, 
coronavirus is having a negative impact or, or a neutral or a positive impact on the town finances. Uh, I just, I was just curious if, if school's not in session, are we saving any money? Uh, school buses okay. are not running, are we saving I money? I believe the mayor will plan to speak to that under um, his report. That would be great, thank you. And if he, and if he doesn't, Eric, um, we'll certainly ask him. Thank you. Will. Is the mayor here? I am. Oh, okay. Thanks, Mayor. Well, we'll give you yes, that opportunity. I, I will. In, I will include that. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, are there any other resident and property owners that wish to speak? Very good. There are no presentations. Uh, I don't believe there are any committee, commission, or board reports. And at this time, I'll entertain any comments of town councilors. Anyone like to speak? Uh, Linda, this is John. Uh, can I go? Yes. Uh, just a quick shout out and uh, an attaboy to the Board of Ed and any other responsible parties that got the online learning up to speed as quickly as they did. Uh, I've been, been hearing people talking about it, and we were uh, days, if not, not weeks, ahead of surrounding areas uh, in getting that implemented. So uh, well done. Kudos from all of us. <laughs> Absolutely. Any other counselors? Uh, this is uh, Mary McGratton. I'll speak now. Um, the Library Commission had a virtual meeting on Monday night using um, Zoom, and it went um, very well. Um, and uh, Gail reported that Stacy, who is the new children's librarian, uh, is doing a story uh, time every week via Zoom. Um, and she's also doing a virtual book club for kids uh, over nine, teens and adults. And each day at four o'clock, she reads a chapter from the book called The Dark is Rising on Facebook Like. And when she finishes it, uh, there will be a discussion. Also the cookbook club, of which I'm a member, um, we cooked, but we weren't able to share our food, but it was uh, on Zoom. And the staff is working on the book collection, removing books that haven't been used in at least four years. That's all. Thanks, Mary. Do any other counselors have any comments? Yeah, this is Councillor Psalms. Um, I, just a public service announcement for those folks who are not speaking, if you mute yourself, Either mute it through the application on your desktop or just mute your phone. It will cut down on some of the background noise. Thank you. Also, um, Linda, this is Roxanne. I'm not sure if you saw Mike Washington says he's on. He's just having some technical issues. Okay, great. Uh, and I would just mention uh, an update on the Ledger Food Pantry. Uh, we have totally changed the way we operate. It is a drive-up system now. Uh, bags are prepared ahead of time. It's actually going um, quite well. We get a little better every day. Uh, we have seen a little bit of an uptick, but not significant, but there has been a bit of an uptick. Um, the, the townspeople have been, uh, their support has been absolutely overwhelming. And I, I just can't say enough about the townspeople of Ledger. It's been pretty incredible. So uh, thank you to everyone out there. Any other town councilors? I'll move on to, uh, I will entertain a motion for regular meeting minutes of March 25th and April 8th. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion's been made and second, is there a second? Second, Mary That's McGrath. It. Thank you. Uh, Roxanne, would you call the roll? Oh, I forgot you. Mr. Sand? Yes. Mr. Sam, um, Mr. Washington, if you want to send me something through chat, I can put your vote down. Yes. Mrs. Davis. Can you hear me? Yes. Now I can. Yes, we can hear you. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Malone? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Sebelia? Yes. Seven in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. 
Uh, let's see, you have your communication. I did not make any referrals. Um, subcommittee and liaison report. Admin? Anyone? Uh, admin is not met. I'm sorry, what, John? Uh, we have not met in a while. Okay. Um, finance. Bill? Bill, you have to unmute yourself. Sorry about that. Yeah. After my public service announcement, I kept myself muted. <laughs> um, so we met at finance last Wednesday. Uh, we briefly discussed, but we continued to delay taking action on the town budget due to the changing nature of the economy and its impact on federal, state, and town revenues. By the way, I'm, I'm reading from my report, so if you can't see the agenda, it's because I've got the report over it, so I apologize. Um, the committee did recommend the council accept the WPCA water budget because the COVID-19 pandemic is anticipated to have less impact on the WPCA budget. We also briefly discussed transferring about a half million dollars from the police building construction project cash account and another half million dollars from the healthcare reserve cash account to the undesignated fund to restore the undesignated fund to a higher level which would be in keeping with our recently enacted policy. A lower undesignated fund balance can result in a lower bond rating by the rating agencies, which then leads to higher borrowing costs. So um, anything we can do to keep our undesignated fund up uh, helps us financially. And uh, once we put those healthcare funds over there, if we actually need them, they are still accessible for use. We also discussed the town, town treasurer's position and options for filling the position when the current treasurer, um, Nancy, unfortunately, finally retires. Uh, we've held on to her as long as we can. One option proposed is to distribute the duties of the treasurer among other town hall employees. And that would potentially save money and work well in the current town government. But it also blurs the separation of power between the town council, which has financial a fiscal authority over the town's finances, and the mayor, who has operational authority. So the committee agreed to continue discussing the options at its next meeting. Um, we also asked the town's land use authorities to consider their land use fee schedules to ensure they're in keeping with other local towns, and the land use department is providing a report of other towns' fee schedules uh, for our next meeting. Everything else is on tonight's agenda, and that's my report. Are there any questions for um, Councilor Som? Hearing none, um, land use and planning, anyone have any report on land use? No, we didn't meet. Okay, thank you, Mike. Any other liaison reports? Yeah, the uh, building committee, Linda, can I go? Yeah. All right, the, uh, the middle school plantings are complete. Sorry, this is Councillor Marshall speaking. Oh, sorry, um, forgot about that. Uh, yeah, Councillor Marshall, uh, uh, Building Committee. Uh, the middle school plantings are complete, and the memorial tree has been replanted. I guess it was uh, was damaged or moved or something, so it, uh, they replanted a new one, uh, same type, same size. We're having problems with the parking lot lights. Some are coming on 24/7. Some don't come on at all. Uh, the problems at both schools, it's a, it's a system problem. They're using timers and photo cells at the same time, working together. And it just makes for a very complicated system that is not working. We fixed it once already, um, and it's not working, so we're looking at a different solution for that. Uh, continuing noise problems with the ventilation system, uh, it's getting less. They're, they're still working on that, trying to get rid of the noise and the heating and cooling. Um, still chasing a couple of leaks in the in the roof, uh, over the media center doorway, and over the stage. Uh, flat roofs are tough, but we'll get it. Uh, Gallup Hill, the, the new stair treads are in. They started to install them. And then when they're done with that, they'll be going over to middle school to, to fix them. The high school track is on schedule for graduation. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to work at this point, but it's going well there. And except for a few uh, electrical conduits, all the subsurface work is complete. And that is my report. Thank you, John. Does anybody have any questions? 
Are there any other liaison reports? Hearing none, uh, Mayor. Yes. Good evening, everybody. So I'll uh, I'll start by addressing the Lantern Hill Road Bridge. Um, just briefly, it's been something that's been discussed for quite a long time, dating back to about 1984 when Mary McGratton was mayor. Um, but we're we continue to uh, to work with Stonington to try to find some kind of interim solution. Um, and my my last email to uh, first select woman Cheesebro was that. Uh, the single worst avenue would be bridge closure, and probably the best outside of replacing the bridge as we had intended would be to have uh, traffic lights on either side of the bridge, allowing alternating one-way traffic patterns. So um, we're going to keep pushing for that, but um, I don't think the full bridge closure will be in the cards. So um, that is on Stonington's bridge inventory with the DOT, but we're going to keep, uh, you know, we had uh, taken that on as um, handling the administrative aspect of it. Steve Maslin did with the former uh, town engineer, Scott Deletta in Stonington, but he has uh, moved on. So Steve's been the total ball carrier on this thing. Um, in regards to Mr. Treister's comment about COVID-19 and how it's impacting the budget, um, we are uh, right now about $250,000 in the red on the general government side of things. Um, that is due to a number of reasons, um, including uh, the VNA, which their their numbers are down as much as 70%. So the the revenues on the VNA VNA side are are um, about as bad as they could get. People just don't want them coming into the house. And um, that is an issue for them. So on the Board of Ed side, I have had communications with uh, Superintendent Hartling. Um, he, is, he is working within the confines of his budget. I have asked him a number of questions about staffing and the um, distance learning and everything else. And he has assured me that he has brought back um, as many people as, the, as he could. He's still using the food service staff that's also a revenue generator for them. So they're losing that revenue stream. And he is um, kind of locking horns with the busing company because he's on the hook to pay the busing company right now, even though there is no busing. So he's, he's actively looking for relief from that, but um, so far not getting that. So um, it doesn't sound like there's going to be nearly as much savings on the board side as I might have hoped. But um, as we move forward, we need to keep a close eye on, on where their finances are shaking out. Uh, on the COVID thing, and then I'll move on from that, because I think we all live that 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, Ledger currently has eight cases, including the one death from several weeks ago. Uh, so in terms of towns of similar size, uh, we, are, we are one of the lowest numbered towns of comparable population. Um, so to give you an example, Deep River, Connecticut also has eight confirmed cases and they have a population of like 4,200 people. So about a quarter, almost a quarter of the size of Ledger for the same number of cases. So Ledger's doing well on that aspect of it. Uh, we are still, you know, working, uh, a number of staff is working remotely. Um, while a number of us still report to the office on a daily basis. And uh, just today we received relief because one of the governor's most recent executive orders required us to wear masks in the workplace as soon as you walked in the door until you leave, um, which we thought was a little bit extreme given that, as an example, my office right now, the nearest person to me is the town clerk all the way across the hall. So we didn't really feel that that was reasonable, and apparently a number, number of other places didn't either, because they um, the uh, DECD granted uh, guidance today saying that uh, no, if you're in your office and you have cubicles that provide separation or separate offices, you don't have to wear the masks there, and that was good. Uh, we continue to have weekly COG meetings right now. These are just uh, via Zoom. But we're, we're bouncing ideas off each other as town leaders as to what's going on, uh, things that are working well, things that aren't, and things that we can maybe 
uh, all together to uh, to improve what we're doing. Um, I I did push back a little bit when there was a little bit of a push to close open spaces and uh, things like parks and the Nathan Lesser House hiking trails, and I, I just didn't want to go there, and I still don't. Um, but some towns are going that far as to put barricades across trailheads and say, no hiking. But um, I'm, like I said, I'm not there. Uh, last week, we had two house fires. We had one on Lincoln Drive and one on Lantern Hill. So again, that Lantern Hill area um, was utilized. It was actually utilized to bring a tanker truck of water up to that fire coming from the Stonington side. So the bridge was used then. Uh, neither of them were total losses. Both will be repairable. But um, the one on Lincoln Drive, unfortunately, the people are going to be out of the house for at least a couple months. In terms of what we're doing to make sure that um, that people are uh, still able to access things in the town hall, the town town uh, tax assessor is emailing tax cards to anybody for free. So if somebody were to call and say, I need a card for 123 Main Street, give, give her your email address and she will send you the scanned card. So no charge for that, but we're getting that done. Same thing with building permits. Building permits are actually going really well. Uh, last week, they were up over the prior week just by a little bit, like $45. But it's uh, we're getting into that, what do they call pool shed and deck season. So a bunch of those permits are starting to come in, and people are understanding that you can still do it, and you can drop it in the drop box up front, and it will process. And they have been. That's good. Um, you're probably all aware that the Memorial Day Parade was canceled. Um, I think that'll probably be the first time that I haven't worn a Hawaiian shirt at the end of, of May for a long time. So maybe I'll still wear it. I don't know. I might just wear it at home that day, but I'm <laughs> sorry that we won't be doing that. Uh, talked about the VNA caseload. Um, the state did approve in their recent bonding, they approved the uh, town aid road funding and the municipal grants in aid. This is for last year. So the current fiscal year that we typically get this, they typically approve this in June of the prior year. Uh, but they did just approve it. We haven't seen the money flow yet, but um, we are, uh, it has been approved that way. Uh, Public Works is way ahead of schedule this year because we had kind of a, a non-winter winter. So Steve will have some savings in his snow budget, which is really good news for us. Um, we'll need that to help balance out the budget. But uh, street sweeping is done, 75% done right now, and they're actually starting to pave roads next week. So uh, they're going to be starting in the Sherwood Forest area. Um, they did already pave the Gales Ferry Library parking lot. That's done. And you've probably, if you've driven through Ledger Center, you've seen some improvements on the town green. Um, so they've they've cleaned that out area up good. They're, they're ready to start growing grass. Uh, some wooden guardrail types have have just been installed in on both sides of the green to kind of help uh, demarcate it a little bit better and to uh, buffer it from vehicles getting access. And they're working on the lower parking area now, putting a lot of gravel down to dry up that area so that it is good uh, parking area for everybody. Uh, just a little quick note, uh, there are no fire marshal inspections right now, and there are no burn permits being issued either. Um, that is just being done out of precaution for the volunteer firefighters that if they have to go out a lot, we don't want to overburden them by somebody that has a burn permit and maybe gets away from them. So we're going to continue to look at that as we go on because we don't want to uh, prevent people from getting stuff done, kind of like the dump closure at some point. Some towns have talked about closing their transfer stations. I didn't really want to do that because if, if people are stuck at home, they might be doing their spring cleaning, and I don't want to stop them from being able to do that, and they don't have to do a lot of interaction when they're at the transfer station. That's still happening. As you know, Thursdays and Fridays are now open for leaves and brush only. So we have Tuesday, Wednesday, regular dump. Thursday, Friday, leaves and brush only. Saturday, back to a regular uh, transfer station day. Um, the police are very busy right now. They're doing uh, business wellness checks just to make sure that closed businesses are secure and there's no fake ins and things like that. They've been doing that a lot. Um, vehicular crashes are way down. 
However, uh, domestic violence, mental health calls, and well-being checkups and thefts are all up. So um, just a little public service reminder, uh, people are getting stretched right now, and I think that's a reason that they're seeing more thefts, things like uh, entering people's sheds and stealing power tools and stuff like that. So um, please consider making make sure your sheds and your house are locked up, and same with your cars. Um, let's see what else. We had a WebEx staff meeting, so we're doing staff meetings now via WebEx, which has gone well. Um, the food pantry, um, Linda, I know you touched on it, and I think we're ahead, we're ahead of the wave, that surge that's coming, but that surge will come after this, which will be the, if you think about the people like from the Alice report, that one in five families that was kind of had their nose above water, this is the type of event that could sink them. So I think the food pantry, uh, LICEF, things like that will be very, very critical after this. And one of the things I would love to see happen, I know we're, we're kind of using a bay or two of the, uh, what I lovingly call the burger barn now, but I would, uh, I would love to be able to uh, negotiate that with the congregational church and, um, you know, find a way for the town to pay for partitioning off some of that, replacing a couple of the garage doors and uh, having that surge capacity, not just the surge capacity, but when <clears throat> Councillor or Chairman Davis has done such an amazing job of getting so much food, we need a place to store it. And it's going to be going out sooner or later, but in the meantime, it's tough to have to say no to a, a substantial food donation from some of these vendors. So um, I would welcome that opportunity if you will grant me that at some point. Uh, today, I participated in a webinar with the Lieutenant Governor about the 2020 census. Um, she picked us out of a, a crowded field because Ledger just so happens has the highest response rate in Southeast Connecticut right now. <laughs> so we're at, uh, I think it's 63.1%, 63.4% response rate so far. Um, the state average in Connecticut is 53.1. So we're way ahead of the curve. So she kind of wanted to ask some questions on what we're doing and and how we're getting there. And um, I've been trying to pepper some posts out there about what it means, but I put one out there today because essentially every single person in Ledger that is not counted costs us $29,000 uh, because it's a 10 year cycle. So you figure it's it, the actual federal funding is $2,900 per capita. So multiply that times 10 years, at the next point that we get somebody counted, we've already lost $29,000. So uh, it's a big deal. Um, but we've done well so far and we need to keep going. We need to get that number up to you know, 85, 90% if we can. I mean, we'd love to see 100, but um, anywhere close to that is really good. And then um, the last thing is our executive order 7DD came out at 6.57 tonight. I barely got to look at it before this meeting started and it looks like everything that's in the newest executive order has to deal with healthcare professionals, providing them waivers and relief from licensing, licensing renewals and things like that. So um, these, these uh, executive orders come out quite often and uh, now we're up to double D on the uh, second round of the alphabet. So we're really moving. But um, outside of that, things are good. Thank you, Mayor. Any questions? Any questions to the mayor or the mayor? Um, mayor, I'm going to refer your comments about the food pantry to um, finance, simply because it is a financial matter, and also because Councilor Psalms is a member of the church. It would be a good liaison for us and could probably tell you how to proceed in that direction. If I remember, the Ledger Fair has use of it until, is it August, Bill? Yes, that's correct, Linda. Uh, they're, they'll be out August 20th. Uh, and we've, as you know, moved a lot of 
um, stuff out of the first three bays on the west side down to the far end. So uh, they've been working with us. You know, they've been loaning their refrigerators. So I, I think between all the parties, we can make this happen. My only comment would be um, the roof on the north side of that building needs to be replaced. And that's part of the plan that the church is talking about. Um, I would hate to see us not replace the roof and do any work inside, but that's that's part of what we can work through. So we'll figure it out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments for the mayor? Uh, yes, Mary McGratton. I didn't realize I was muted before. Um, last Sunday, uh, we took a ride to Stoddard's Wharf Park. There was uh, that's the state-owned park off Route 12. There were a fairly a good number of people down there in their cars, walking the trails, a lot of fishing. Um, my one complaint is the, I'm not gonna call it a road, I'll call it the driveway into the park. It's awful. It is just full of holes. You can't even go around the holes because every every spot has got a hole. I was wondering, Mayor, if you have any contact with the state on that particular park or the condition of the the driveway into the park i i don't but i can certainly make contact with somebody at deep and yeah, somebody uh, should come and look at it it's yeah. really really bad okay. maybe what i'll do is i'll go down there and i'll get pictures and everything and then i will send it to them to get okay because it is being used um i, I see people walking and there's a lot of fishing going on Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Any comments? Okay, uh, moving on to old, there is no old business. Would anyone like to amend the agenda under new business? Hearing none, um, Bill, the rest of the agenda is pretty much yours. Okay, thank, thank you, Chairman Davis. Uh, I move to authorize the purchase of a server for the 911 Dispatch Center's Emergency Medical Dispatch Program in the amount of $5,047.23. Is there a second? Second. Councilor okay. Malone. Okay. Thank you. Discussion? So I'm hoping I, I'm, yeah, I'm hoping I can show you the agenda item, but that doesn't seem to be working. Um, so I'll just summarize what's going on here. Um, the Emergency services or the, the communication center has upgraded their software, but learned in the process that uh, the server we're using uh, does not have the capacity to support the new software functionality. So uh, they went out and got three bids. Uh, we were fortunate in that the bids through the state with Dell Computer was significantly less. It was about $1,200 less than buying the server direct from from Dell. So that's one state bidding contract that's working well. Um, and they're proposing that we use the lowest bid, which is the state contract with Dell. Bill, just a question a little bit off the topic with this, but this Dell um, computer buy-in as far as the state. Are we gonna start utilizing that for other town equipment? I mean, I know we, We've always had that discussion about um, the uh, value of building our own computers versus just buying a Dell computer. Has there been any, maybe the mayor would know as well, has there been any more discussion on that? Because it seems like a really good deal. Yeah, it is a really I good agree. deal. Yeah, it, it, it's, I think this was a little bit of an eye opener for the MIS department that um, their, their preferred vendor was CDW. Um, but uh, with the governor's negotiation with Dell, uh, this proved to be an outstanding buy, and I think it opens the door for us to do more business through that state bid contract. And I think we collectively need to push that. That this was this was just the first example of that. Good, thank you. Yeah, good question. Um, are we ready to vote? Whoops. My computer just blipped off. Fortunately, I'm on my iPad, which did not blip off. <laughs> <laughs> Roxanne, would you call the roll? 
Mr. Washington? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Malone? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Celia? Yes. Mr. Som? Yes. Seven in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Next item, Mr. Som? Okay, if you uh, folks will forgive me for a minute, I'm going to reduce the size of this agenda. I'm going to close the split screen because that's not working anyway. And I'm going to try and make it so everybody can see it. So bear with me. Roxanne, I'm trying to figure out how to exit split screen. Does anybody, you or anyone know how to do that? Um, I think if you just um, maybe arrow back up at the top where it says agenda to the left, it says um, on the left side of, above the seal on the agenda. Did that do it? Yeah, okay. So... No, it didn't work. Oh, um. oh. Others, I'm not quite sure, for, uh, you know, from here how to do it. Yeah, me either. I think, um, I think you, if, if you shut it and went back in, it would you would reset it if you shut the agenda. I'm going to, yeah, I'm just going to go to a different page. Everything is always on top of everything. <laughs> At least our meetings don't disappear once they've started. That's good. <laughs> That is very good. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to zoom back in. I think. And I'm going to click on the item, and you should all be able to see it now shortly. Okay, so I move to approve a proposed resolution regarding the tax deferment program pursuant to Governor Lamont's Executive Order 2020-7S as contained in the draft dated April 13, 2020. There a second. Uh, Councilor Malone seconds. So um, <clears throat> the, the town Towns in Connecticut were offered two options. One is to delay um, taxes. The other is to um, offer a lower interest rate for uh, late payment or both. And the mayor worked with the town tax collector and determined that it would be extremely complicated to try and change interest rates and that offering a 90-day grace period uh, as a deferral program would be a much easier and feasible option for the town to pursue. So uh, Kathy Demetrius, uh, who is our new town tax collector, worked with other tax collectors in the state, or actually the Tax Collectors Association, it might have been larger than, it well, it probably was the state, doesn't matter. Uh, but they wrote an agenda, uh, the Finance Committee reviewed it last week, and I'm going to scroll down so that we, I hope we can see it. So can everybody see the entire resolution? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we have some questions. It, it appeared in reading the, the resolution as written 
that it did not have an end date, uh, and we thought that we should, we didn't know if it was an oversight, but it might have been, and we thought that since it could be an oversight, we should have some way of ending this resolution uh, at the end of the, the national or the state emergency. Um, so we added a couple of paragraphs, which the first says, unless the town council, the town of, of Ledger takes action to extend this tax deferment program, the resolution will terminate no later than 30 days after the state's public health, health emergency is passed. Um, and it also says the deferment provided under the resolution shall not affect any interest or penalties on taxes or assessments for the collection of municipal charges that were due before the emergency began. So we added those two things to it. Uh, so the rest was written by the Tax Collectors Association. I think it's the right thing to do for our residents. Um, we're seeing uh, deferments and 90-day extensions for, uh, for renters through governor's orders, uh, as well as uh, many other um, means that have been put in place to offer people some relief, and I think the town has an obligation to do this too. Are there any questions? There's one quick thing I could add. We're, we're required as a town, we're required to adopt one, the other, or both. And yeah, so, thank you, Mayor. yep, this was the decision that was made. And uh, today, Kathy Demesis, the tax collector, got a spreadsheet from 111 other state towns that have already passed their resolutions. And 67% of them, I believe it is, went with the deferral option and a very, very small percentage um, chose the um, to do both. So it seems that the deferment is the overwhelming um, preferred option, which is the one that uh, the Finance Committee has chosen. Good. Any questions? Good point. Roxanne, would you call the roll, please? Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Malone? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Sebelia? Yes. Mr. Som? Yes. Mr. Washington? Yes. Seven in favor, zero opposed. Uh, mo motion carries. Next item. I move to appoint Bloom Shapiro to conduct auditing services for the general government, WPCA, and schools for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2020, in accordance with Chapter 3, Section 11 of the Town Charter, RFP number 2018-070-Auditing Services. Is there a second? Councilor Malone seconds. Thank you. Discussion? So several years ago, um, we went out to bid. Uh, actually, I believe it would have been three years ago we went out to bid. We went through a two-year contract with Bloom Shapiro, um, and we've, we're have we now in the second of two option years. This would take us to the second, I'm sorry, we're in the first of two option years. This would take us to the second of two option years, and after that we have to put it out to bid again. But the reason we selected Bloom Shapiro uh, was we were looking for an auditing firm who would actually give us advice as as much as they can do that within their purview uh, to help us manage the town because the town spends a lot of money on these auditing services and it's at the end of the process we want to know what we need to do to do better and an accountant or accounting firms tend to protect themselves and insulate themselves from offering advice uh, we were frustrated with the last firm that that when we asked questions, we, we got lots and lots of words, but reading their documents and listening to their answers, we weren't getting much management advice, even though there's a management letter. Um, our experience with Bloom Shapiro has been excellent. Uh, as I say, to the extent that they're able, they give us advice, they make recommendations. They also come back and look at us and comment on the steps we've taken to uh, it implement their their recommendations and uh, the the overall experience with with them has been very positive. They're on time with the audit. The previous firm 
was always late. Um, they they have credible, candid people, and they're I, I think just a pleasure to work with. Thank you. Any other questions, I, Mayor? Do you want to comment? I, I forgot to talk about um, they're they're well within their budget. Um, I I don't recall if we actually save money, but but um, can you comment on that, Mayor? Yeah, I think it, this this bid that we had with them was within a thousand or two dollars, a thousand or two thousand dollars of our of our previous bid. But um, the feeling in general was that Bloom Shapiro was was like the 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 crown jewel of the auditing firms. And Marsha, as you know, was very excited if we had the opportunity to work with them because they are consummate professionals. So um, from a dollar perspective, this for, for what we're now getting, and, and Bill, you and I have both sat through the audit presentations from both the prior firm and uh, Bloom Shapiro now, and I think they're apples and oranges. So I think what we're getting now for the, I think it's like $1,500 more is what it was essentially costing us. I wanna say $50,400 was what the bid was. So. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's um, definitely in line, and we are getting our value. Yeah, thank you. And Councilor Malone, I, I think you had the same experience and the same comments. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the clarity provided by Bloom Shapiro uh, is a thousand percent better than the previous auditor. Uh, and again, like you said, their reports are concise. They're full of good recommendations that are backed up with solid financials. So I can't say good things about them. Thank you. Very good. Are we ready to vote? Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mr. Malone? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Sevilla? Yes. Mr. Sam? Yes. Mr. Washington? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Seven in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Next item. I move to approve a proposed resolution regarding the establishment of an account for the revenues received from leasing the Ledyard High School multi-use facility as contained in the draft dated April 1, 2020. Councilwoman Long, second. Discussion. I'm going to I'm going to expand this one here. Uh, as you'll recall, uh, when we had the town meeting about the uh, the replacement of the town track and field facility, um, the uh, superintendent recommended that we set up an account so that we could set aside monies for the eventual replacement of the artificial turf. Um, that turf is expected to last for about 12 years. The cost of replacement is estimated to be about $450,000. So uh, the Finance Committee has worked with the Board of Ed, gotten their comments on the draft that um, uh, Roxanne Marr helped wrote, wrote for us uh, based on the comments we've made and some of the, the things we wanted to accomplish. And what I want to show you now is the, if I can, maybe not, I got it. We did make some changes. I want to show you the final version of the resolution. Here we go. Um, so I won't read the whole thing to you, but I want to point out uh, some of the things that we changed uh, as we talked with the Board of Ed. Um, one addition we made, you'll see in the middle of the page, is we said the leasing of the facility shall be in accordance with Ledyard High School use and fee policies. The Board of Ed had inserted something about not charging for anything except for non legged groups for the use of the field. And the feeling of the Finance Committee was that was probably right to do, but, but it may have missed a lot of other territory that should be in a policy somewhere. Um, so we, we inserted this, this sentence. Um, we also added uh, that the Board of Ed would every two years evaluate the condition of the field 
and determine its anticipated refurbishment cost. Could be 450,000, could be more, could be less. Um, and then further, we added that the net funds, that was a Board of Ed request from those fees, um, the, and 15% of the surplus funds returned to the general fund by the Board of Ed when the surplus funds exceed $250,000. So what that means is if the Board of Ed has a surplus and the surplus is more than $250,000, that 15% of those funds would go into this general fund. Um, the, the, I'm sorry, not the general, but the, uh, the replacement fund. Um, and then at the bottom, we, we said the last change was we would cap that amount because we don't want to keep putting money into the fund uh, once we exceed the amount needed to replace the turf. Um, I do have one more change to consider making. Um, I had a, an email conversation with the finance chair from the Board of Ed, Mr. Bronner, and he still wanted to, his feeling was that we should still talk about the non ledgered organization. Um, I tried to have, set up a call with him today, wasn't able to, um, so we haven't discussed it, but I still feel that we, we are better off having the Board of Ed develop a policy and put all of their pricing and all of their comments in that policy so that uh, it sees the light of day rather than try to address this minor detail through a resolution. So um, Roxanne has suggested that we replace that Board of Ed uh, policy with these words, and I'm gonna read them. I know you can't see them, but the sentence would now say the leasing of the facility shall be in accordance with the Board of Education Facility Usage Policy number 1330. I know you can't see that, so now I'm back. And that, that sentence would replace what currently says high school use and fee policies. And other than that, I, I think we're ready to, uh, to move on this resolution. Bill, could you read that change again? Sure. The leasing of the facility shall be in accordance with the Board of Education Facility Usage Policy number 1330. Okay. This um, is Roxanne, if I might. Um, when um, Bill got the message from the Board of Ed Finance Chair, I went back and looked through some of the minutes, and that was the policy number that Superintendent Hartling mentioned that that was the policy that they would use for the leasing of any of the uh, Board of Ed facilities. So that's where we came up with that policy number. Thank you, Roxanne. That's good. Any questions for Councillor Song? Um, Bill, realistically, what, what realistically do we expect there'll be any money generated here? Very little. Um, there, there are two sources of funds. One is uh, user fees, which we think will be very small. Um, and, and we also don't want to kind of push the, the Board of Ed into charging other legged organizations, specifically Parks and Rec, for using the field. We, this is a town facility, so no. We don't expect a lot of money. The money will come from surplus from the Board of Ed. Uh, so if they have surplus left over at the end of each year, that money goes into capital, and quite often it's a significant amount of money. So what we're saying is we're going to take 15% of that, and that's really how we're going to fund this replacement fund. Okay. Very good. Any other questions? Hearing none, Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Sevilla? Yes. Mr. Som? Yes. Mr. Washington? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Malone? Yes. Seven in favor, zero votes. Motion carries. Next item. 
I move to approve to increase by $65,295 the appropriation from the Board of Ed Reserve account number 21070101-58250 to account 201-70101-58255 Board of Education Asbestos Ledyard High School for the Ledyard High School Asbestos Project for a total project cost in the amount of $279,296 for the purposes of completing asbestos abatement project at the Ledger High School in accordance with the state consent order. Is there a second, in please? No, in addition. Oh, Next one. In addition, upon receipt of state grant funding, reimburse Board of Education Reserve Account number 2107010185250. Council Malone seconds. Thank you, Tom. So um, last year, this is, first of all, I always, I've, I've, as long as I've been associated with the council, I've been hearing this is the last project. So this is the last project. And we went out to bid last year for this project and the bids came in so much higher that the Board of Ed and the town decided to just put the, put the project on hold and hope that prices would come back at a more reasonable level. Um, they did, they did come back at a more reasonable level. So now we're, we're anticipating moving forward with this uh, final phase in the asbestos removal project. Um, and the way this works is we spend the money, um, we get the fund, the, the grant funding, and then we put that money back in the account. So we're taking out of the Board of Ed Reserve account to pay for it. Any questions? Roxanne, would you call the roll, please? What? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sebelia? Yes. Mr. Song? Yes. Mr. Washington? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Malone? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Seven in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Uh, we, we have no further business. I think this was much tidier than last time. <laughs> and we're, we're getting much better. So thank you all very much. We even had some public comment, which was nice. And that went, that went well. Uh, and with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Motions made and seconded. This meeting is adjourned.